Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for, yeah, another edition of the show. So um, I'm looking over to Bone, actually I'm looking at the tourist information place. I'm at the uh, Ibis Styles Bone Center, not the Ibis Bone Center Hotel, they're different, the Styles. And this seems like close to everything, um, walking distance. Anyway, um, I'm, I uh, was at the grocery store really to, why did I go there? I went there, I went to this because I needed to buy one of these because I never packed one in my luggage. Um, and pack it in your checked bags. Don't ever pack it in like your carry-ons because TSA will take it away, at least in the United States. I don't know about Europe. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so while I was there, I decided to, you know, look at the wines. And um, I wasn't looking for anything special. I just kind of was browsing and see what they have. Of course, it's like majority is French wine, kind of like the United States is going to be majority of the United States wine. Um, but uh, I, I saw this one and it was from the, it's from the Ventoux. And I honestly don't remember if I've ever had, at least not for the show, a wine from the Ventoux and, and probably never, ever. Um, but, um, and I want to say I paid like three ninety nine or four ninety nine like euros for Euro 99 cent, whatever, however, however they say it. Um, it was like under five euros. So it's, which is under about $7-ish, um, you know, whatever. When I do the actual podcast, I'll probably, you know, editing, I'll hopefully I'll put the conversion in there. But um, I was like, let's try it. I hadn't even looked to see what the grapes were, if they even had them on the back, which they do. I posted a picture of it and one of my friends was like, I forgot what he said, but uh, on the back, well, you know, we'll get to that in a second. So where is the, where is the Cote de Ventoux? So it is um, in the southeastern part of the Rhone wine region. Um, this is where wine is produced in 51 communes of the Valcluse de Department along the lower slopes of the Ventoux Mountain um, at the foot of the Val Valcluse Mountains. And then there's a neighboring application of Cotes du Luberon stretches along its southern border and is separated from it by the Calavon River. Um, anyway, uh, it says that there has been archaeological evidence of winemaking equipment being dated back to um, 30 AD. And that's about, no, there's a little bit more. Um, I mean, there's, there's not much else about it. I mean, it's not, it's not like a... Uh, major wine region anyway so i thought it was kind of interesting and uh so we went ahead and got it so this is the 2016 uh club de sommelier uh ventu um and this is one of those it, it's kind of like from what i can tell it might be a private label for the casino supermarket group i'm not positive um it looks like there's a company the company who actually manufactured is mosigal uh, Monsiga, M-O-N-C-I-G-A-L-E. Um, I found, um, looks like there's a, a company that handles their stuff called, uh, well, I don't know if it's a company, it just says the guide, the hatchet guide of wines, I guess, I don't know. Um, but, uh, they had them listed with some of the products. Um, if you look up Club des Sommeliers, you get a company that's actually out of Brazil, but it's it's the right logo, and um, they don't only really have a website; they have a Facebook page. So, um, and then uh, the town that they make it in, that they actually make this in, is called Beaucaire. Uh, it is a French commune in the Guard Department, and it's even farther south um, than it's it's south of Rhone. Um, it's like between Rhone and and like the, the language, not the language doc. Um, yeah. Anyway, 
So let's check it out. Um, it looks like they make a bunch of like entry level wines or whatever. I haven't used a single clutch um, wine key in a while. I bought the wine key not for this wine, but because I had got a wine uh, one of the nights I was you know having dinner, and um, I didn't finish it, so I put the cork back in. But I could put it back in so far that. There's no way I was going to get out without a wine key. And I thought I had one, but then I realized I didn't. So I had to buy one. Anyway, um, as you see from the interview so far, I'm having a great time. Uh, I spent the weekend uh, actually being a tourist. I went to the wine museum and I also went to the Hospice de Boone, um, which is basically a, a, um, a museum. Well, it's still a hospital, but as a museum... Uh, about the hospital that's been around since the 1400s. So um, pretty cool on that. All right, so I know fancy plastic glass, but we'll see. No spit cup. This halftime on the uh, football game, as in the Tottenham Hotspur Liverpool, um, halftime is probably over by now. Uh, by the time I got all this set up, Liverpool, I mean, uh, Tottenham was winning 3 1. Got a last, last second goal uh, at the end of the halftime. So Hopefully we're good by the time I get back to this. All right, so let's check it out. Oh, I forgot to tell you what the grapes are. Uh, ba, 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 ba. It is Grenache Syrah Moved in that order. So a GSM. And then on the back, you can't, you can't really see the label. And I don't know why you can see that. Anyway, um, <clears throat> it looks like they have like three different things to kind of tell you what it is. It says supple... Or super equilibre. So supple and I'm going to say equally uh, uh, well balanced between coarse and fruit. Um, so it should be a well balanced, easy drinking wine, apparently. So it really actually smells like a winery. I mean, I, I've been in wineries the past few days and it has that grapey, like fermented, like you're, you're, like you, you're, you're there. You're there when once fermentation is finished or during fermentation. So you've got the grape smell. So you get a lot of that. I mean, this is not fine wine. This is you know everyday drinking wine, right? Touch of spice, touch of uh, cinnamon. It's kind of hard to swirl in a plastic cup, and it's exact not exactly the best. I mean, it's got some red fruit to it. But it's more it's more grapey than anything else. Let's see how it tastes. Tastes about as good as any seven dollar bottle of wine in the United States. Um, it's something you definitely. So the idea was I was going to do a picnic today. All right. <clears throat> I actually thought I was going to do the hospice and the muse, the um, wine museum in the same day, but I didn't get a chance to get to the wine museum because I spent so long at the, I mean, the hospice, I spent so long at the wine museum that by the time I was like, man, I really can't do both. I'll do the hospice on Sunday, like afternoon. And I thought maybe Sunday morning, because the weather looked like it might be okay um, to do like a, like a picnic type thing, except I wouldn't be drinking any burgundy wine but I would try to find like, you know, I know of at least one picnic table somewhat nearby um, for my second appointment here. Um, my first in Burgundy, my second for the trip, because uh, I stopped by <clears throat> in that area to take pictures. My voice has been messed up the whole week, and I really feel like I haven't been able to taste the wines that well. Uh, I mean, I've tasted them, but I think I'm, I'm missing stuff, but they're all great. Um, but, uh, man... One, it was supposed to rain, it, like this weekend. Um, today wasn't so bad. It didn't really rain. It rained just like a tad when I left this wine shop that has a ridiculous amount of old vintage stuff because um, the guy buys from private collections. But I, I just, I, I'm really not in a position right now to be buying wine to bring back home. Um, mainly because I don't have anywhere to put it. But um, anyway, I didn't... Um, I, I also woke up late because you know why? Because the Astros made it to the World Series... And, of course, by the time you're seeing this, the World Series will be well over. So I'm hoping that the prediction from the Sports Illustrated uh, cover from 2014 
held true, though I didn't know about it until yesterday because they made a big deal of it on TV. Um, but uh, so I stayed up till 5.30, almost 6 in the morning watching it, and then I went to bed. <laughs> but uh, anyway, enough of that. Um, so the idea was to have a picnic. Well, uh, I'm not going to have a picnic, but I am going to watch football tonight, and I kind of plan on watching it here in the hotel, which means I either I have to go get, get food. And there really isn't a lot of places to get food, and I want to get pizza, but the there's a couple places. I, there's a place nearby I get pizza, and there's another place I was probably going to get pizza, but then I saw a really, really bad TripAdvisor uh, review from two days ago like a hygiene type of thing, not just like, oh, the food sucked. No, like somebody did something on a hygiene sense and the guy just didn't really, really care. So uh, I'm probably not going to go there. And I'm not going to call him out on, on the video, but I'm just not going to go there. Um, plus, it's cold outside, man. I, I didn't bring a jacket. I, I had to buy one of these, bought a vest. I should have bought the one with the sleeves, but I don't know, language barrier and all that. And it's nice and all, but geez, it's cold. And I want to be able to watch the football game, and it's hard to do it at 7 o'clock in a restaurant. And, and So I'm probably going to go to, of all places, Mickey D's, um, which is about f 5, 10 minute drive away. But uh, anyway, and come back to the hotel. So um, I'm going to watch that, and then I got uh, other stuff. So what about the wine? I forgot about that, yeah. Um, you know, it's easy drinking. Would I necessarily identify as a, as a GSM? I, I could probably see the Syrah part. Um, it, it, it just really tastes like a kind of a generic red blend wine, um, which it is a red blend. Um, is it something that I would completely identify as something from uh, the Rhone area? Uh, probably not. Um, but, I mean, it's five euros or four euros, whatever it was, and <clears throat> something easy to drink. I mean, that, that's the whole goal of this wine. And, you know, this is a country that drinks a ton of wine. Like every restaurant has, their their main list of alcohol is wine. And then, then after that, a lot of places, rum is huge over here, it seems like, which I don't remember that when I was in Bordeaux. But rum seems to be like the biggest category of liquor that they have at least some places, just they'll have like 30 or 40 different rums, kind of like how places will have that many scotches and whiskeys in general, and then they'll have like five rums in the United States. Well, the opposite here, they have like 30 rums and like a couple whiskeys, a couple vodkas, well, maybe like five or six vodkas, you know, a couple gins. Um, but yeah, rum, big, big. And I guess a lot of that has to do with, there was a lot of, um, we have Martinique, which is French, uh, and other places that have French influence. So there's probably been a big influence on their culture. And all kinds of just liqueurs. What we call liqueurs, they'll call liqueur, everything liquor is liqueur anyway. But cordials and things like that. So I've been really having a good time uh, playing around with those things um, at Paratis and Digicifs. Um, it's been really great to do that at, at almost every dinner and just doing something different every time. So... Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as a wine, this is something that you could totally have at your house. You, know, you want to um, just something just to have with with a dinner. You're gonna make something, you know, not 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 too terribly light, but you want something that's got a little bit of body to it and it tastes good. You know. In some ways, it tastes better than some of the five dollar to seven dollar red blends that I've had in the United States because some of them have this kind of chemical bitterness to it, whereas this doesn't have as much of that. It, it's it's not really there. Um, but it's very grapey also. It's like, yeah, it's grape juice with alcohol in it. Anyway, um, that's going to do it for this episode. Um, this is probably after all of the interviews. So um, all the interviews should have happened at this point. And uh, I just want to say, uh, even though I, I have three more interviews left, so I have like almost a little less than half uh, interviews left, I, all I can say is at least up until this point, the Burgundians have been nothing but nice to me. Um, not that the Bordelais were not nice, they were totally nice, but it's just like a different, it's like a different thing. I told a, a buddy of mine, it's, you know, they really are farm, as far as the, the wine people, they really are farmers out here. 
Like when you go, you're talking, it's kind of like going to Texas wineries in many ways. You're going to, to probably talk to the owner and or winemaker um, when you have, like what I do when I do these private things. Um, these small because these are small wineries. These are not big, big, huge estates. I mean, they're they're doing. I mean, you heard one the PO say is fifteen hectares. It's not a lot, you know. So these are small production places. Yes, Bouchard is a really large production, and the person I talked to has works in the PR department, um, but she's one of the people that would handle this type of stuff. Um, but uh, I mean, most of these places are small, and they welcome you, and they're so hospitable. Uh, and I, and, and I'm, I'm so grateful because, because they are so small, I know that their time is super valuable. So I try not to take as, take too much time. I just let them know it's up to you, up to them, how much they want to, how much they want to do. Uh, but that's going to do it. Uh, click the links above to friend me up, click the link over there to send ducats. I don't like saying that in front of the, in front of the vignerons, uh, because I don't want to sound like I'm begging money for money. Cause I'm not just, Hey, you want to send some money? Boom. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, that side, it right? That side. That's where the that's where the button is. Over there is nothing. Um, and then click the link below to find out more about, I guess, this. And um, hopefully by this point, I may have set up some Flickr albums of all the pictures I took in Burgundy and po- probably on Facebook. But I know Facebook limits how many pictures per album. It's kind of a pain. But Flickr, you can just upload a crap ton of stuff. So um, anyway, look for that. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time.